Welcome back to the candidate one-on-one uh, -on -one campaign videos. Uh, if this is your first video that you're watching, uh, my name is Corey King. I'm the executive director of the Bath Brunswick Regional Chamber. And we do these videos every every cycle uh, for our state house candidates that are in our chamber region. So I do need to put a disclaimer at the top of this that the, the chamber does not uh, endorse any state house candidates, but we uh, we do like a lot of them. And so you, you'll see this as a pretty personable uh, conversation uh, because we want to get the businesses in our region um, and, and the citizens to get to know who, who these candidates are. And so Vince is our next one. Vince, how are you? I'm doing pretty good, Corey. Thanks for giving me this opportunity. Oh my gosh. Thank, thank, thanks for making time for it. I know how busy you must be door knocking and, and everything along with, you know, um, you know, of course in Maine, everyone's just, it's a citizen legislature, so everyone's working too. So there's a, there's a lot of bits to it. So I appreciate you making the time. Um, Vince, as you know, we're going to do five questions. I, I try to do the same five questions with all candidates to make it fair, but also depending on your answers, we'll probably go down some roads and explore some of your answers too. So, um, first question is an easy one. What district are you running for and where does that cover? Uh, district 49, and that covers Rousick, Georgetown, Pittsburgh, West Bath, and Woolwich. Perfect. Uh, Vince, tell us a little bit about your background and why you're running for office. Uh, I was born, raised, and educated in Rousick County. Um, I, after, after I got my degree, I joined the Navy. Uh, spent 20 years there, retired as a chief petty officer, uh, came out of there and ran a couple of uh, VIPs as a general manager. And now I work for uh, a global telecommunications company uh, that they'd rather not be mentioned. <laughs> and um, the reason I really want to run is because it seems like a lot of Mainers uh, don't feel that they're being represented. They don't feel that the government is listening and it's got nothing to do with party. Uh, the more doors I knock on, uh, the more people I meet that are, that are uh, of my party, not of my party or unaffiliated uh, tend to like what I have to say. And when I, when they ask me questions, I, I answer them honestly. And sometimes I give them answers that, that they don't want to hear, but it's my honest opinion. And uh, that's why I want to run. I want to run uh, as a statesman, not as a politician. And I want uh, my grandchildren to grow up in a Maine that's a lot more similar to the Maine I grew up in, uh, to the one that several years ago, the, the way life should be. I think we're ebbing away from that. And I'd like to make sure that all Mainers, regardless of their age, can afford to live here. And right now, that's in jeopardy. For sure. No, absolutely. For sure. You know, I, 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 I hear it from my businesses. I, I hear it from my employees. And I mean, I feel it myself. You know, my wife and I, um, I you know, I, I'll say we're, we're squarely in the middle class and we've got a one year old and a three year old. And between the child care costs and, and everything else, it's it's tough. And I, and I think about people that are that are not as fortunate as we are. And, and, and you know, how do they make it? It's 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 a scary time. Hey, uh, we're in a rooster, by the way, just out of curiosity. Uh, grew up in a little suburb of Caribou called Woodland. Oh yeah, Woodland. I'm sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. Now my uh, my stepdad was from Fort Fairfield, so um, so yeah, so uh, southern uh, boy. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so you've been going around uh, uh, campaigning, knocking on doors. So question three is: What are the top three issues affecting Mainers right now that you look forward to working on if elected? Number one is education. Uh, back in the 90s, uh, Maine got heavily into a new movement of core education, trying to, and it was well, well intended. It was trying to make sure that regardless of where anybody starts out uh, in their, in their process, whatever, whatever uh, skills and academia they bring into the school system, they're all treated equally. Uh, unfortunately, by, by adopting uh, the, the core uh, education system and changing the way we're shifting from academics to social issues in the classroom, we've kind of dropped the ball. We we went from in the top 10%, depending on which metric you look at it, back in the top 5% back in the 90s and by some measures to now somewhere between 36th and 49th. Uh, again, looking at 
whatever metric you want to look at. And our cost per student has gone up after in, uh, accounting for inflation by over 70%. And the big deal why a lot of these, uh, our educators and our system went to this is because the federal uh, money was, was there if you adopted into this uh, core system. Unfortunately, we're dumping more and more money and getting less and less education. Uh, the money isn't worth what we're getting. So education is a big thing. And also putting the parents' rights back in the classroom, which I think has been eroded uh, tremendously, very much so in just the last several years. Uh, another thing is the um, our accountability for government uh, right now. Um, oh, excuse me. And that, that's... Uh, Yes, I think it is. I think it's government accountability. Now that I think about it, that's the correct answer. Yeah. Right now, uh, our tax burden is crushing. Um, and a lot of that is because government officials that are responsible for budgets regularly uh, go over budget and there's no repercussions, none whatsoever. Uh, they still get raises. Uh, if the money runs out, we just uh, have a... Uh, subsidiary amended budget and dump more money in. Where that money comes from, it comes from you and me. Uh, and regardless of what the state, the Fed, or the city or county tells you, it's not their money, it's your money, um, everybody who's listening. And I don't want to spend your money in such a manner that uh, I'm afraid to be transparent about it. And I also don't want to spend money uh, uh, on the wrong problems. Uh, another problem I see in our government is we fix things that aren't the real problem. Um, I'll give you an example. Oh, please. Uh, we have a problem with Atlantic salmon getting past the dams in Maine. Uh, our solution was to pull out the dams. Uh, great for the Atlantic salmon. However, it was not a good a solution because now we a very clean source of hydroelectric power is gone. Uh, a more simple solution would have been to update and make them more ecologically friendly to the salmon, make better fishways. Uh, so now we have uh, Atlantic salmon. That's a great thing. And we also have high electricity bills. That's not such a great thing. Um, our welfare system is probably the third thing I would love to uh, beef up because right now there is absolutely no way to differentiate between the can'ts and the won'ts. We've based all our uh, entitlement systems on a gross uh, income instead of trying to get people into a spot where they don't need assistance. We wow. want to get people the assistance they need. These are the these are the can'ts, uh, and we have no way to separate anybody that's just not motivated. And I'm not trying to be down on people saying that you know you have to pull up by your own bootstraps. I get it. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, my family was a single parent household, and we were on welfare for a very short period. And uh, my mother worked hard. She had incentive and she got off it. And that's exactly what I want to do. I want to provide incentive instead of uh, having a ceiling on the problem right now. Um, a, a very specific uh, instance of this was when I was uh, operating as a general manager for VIP. I went to promote someone uh, and he said, great, how much is the raise? And I told him, he said, I can't take the promotion. If I get that promotion, my children will go hungry. That should never happen in, a, in any kind of government whatsoever. Uh, we have to fix that. Uh, so I want to make sure that these things get fixed. Well, it's, uh, you know, this is our first time meeting, and, and, and I, I love the way that you put some things. First, thank you for your service. I meant to say that earlier, uh, but, but I think you're a veteran. But, but secondly, I love the numbers that, that that you come with, you know, on the education and those things. You you clearly have looked into this stuff. You you, you clearly are passionate uh, about this. Uh, and, and that last point about about the welfare cliff is such a critical point. I remember, God, it was 12, 15 years ago now, 
I was working at a small business and, and this guy said, Hey, I gotta, I, I, I gotta stop working next Wednesday. <laughs> said, what, is everything okay? Like what's, what's wrong? And he's like, no, 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 I just, I can't go over my, my yearly, in, you know, uh, you know, or, or I lose all my main care benefits and my kids on, on, you know, needs this med medicine and I can't afford it any way else. Like, I don't, I don't really have a choice. And I was, and it was such a stark thing to me that that one dollar over that amount, and they lost everything. And I, I know uh, Trey Stewart and, and a few other folks had had started to look at this and doing a step down, where once you hit this wage threshold, you get eighty percent of the benefit, and if you get this wage threshold, you get sixty percent. So it 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 can incentivize these people to keep going. And I, and I think it's a really it's something that a lot of people just don't know about, and I, and I think it would be a real game changer workforce wise for, for for some of these folks to 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 continue working. So it's it's such a great thing to point out. Um yeah. Uh question four. If voters could only know two things about you before they fill out their ballot, what would those two things be? And I'll I'll, I'll preface this by saying I've also asked this question as after you knock on someone's door and you meet them, after you're walking away, what are two things that you want them to to remember about you? So take it however you want. Uh First off, I'm a I'm a humble man, and I have no uh, qualms about speaking honestly. Like I said before, if I if you ask me a question, I'm going to answer it honestly, and and very often I can tell that my answer is not going to bode well with with whom I'm uh, speaking. However, uh, I have no desire to be a politician whatsoever. Uh, I'm not in it for the fame, uh, the glory, or the money. Uh, I'm not sure there's any of those involved anyway. But what <laughs> I have a, a true desire uh, to serve again. Uh, I'm like I said before. I'm I'm worried about my my grandkids that live in this state. I'm worried about my mother who's 94 years old who lives in this state. Uh, I'm vested, and I I really appreciate this state, and I really want to do what's right. Uh, more than to appease any particular group. Um, special interest groups have the ear of uh, our leaders, and that bothers me. Uh, I really, when I was in the Navy, I got in trouble a few times for telling no to my bosses uh, and uh, had to answer for that. And ultimately, after I became a chief, I was at a, at a position where I could explain why I thought that we should do things differently. Mm -hmm. And that taught me a lot about working with people um, who, who are above me. In this case, it would be the citizenship of Maine by, by putting out the truth uh, and, and accepting full responsibility and accountability uh, when things don't go right. Um, so that's a thing I, I don't shirk accountability. And right now, I think that's a, you know, we talk about all these words you can't use uh, in public and the A word right now in government seems to not exist. Uh, I'd like to bring that back. Um, another thing is my unwavering work ethic. Uh, like I said, I was born and raised in the county. Uh, my first paycheck from someone other than my family, I got at age six. And with the exception of age seven, I took a hiatus. Uh, I've been, <laughs> Sorry, that's okay. I've been working ever <laughs> since. Uh, I am also middle class, and it seems like uh, a lot of things that uh, government is currently doing might seem to be uh, for the benefit of the majority of people, which are the working class. Uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick one right now: the uh, raising of the minimum wage. Uh, it was to financial independence, what cotton candy is to famine. Uh, it tastes good in your mouth at the moment. Uh, however, it did not help those uh, in the lower spectrum because inflation kind of wiped out everything. Uh, the, the business owners in general, not always, uh, in order to protect their profit margin, had to raise their prices. So they were protected quite a bit. But those of us in the middle class didn't get a raise and we couldn't up our own income. So we lost. And uh, I am I really want to represent everybody who's in the middle of that bell curve, uh, both financially and socially. 
I'm, I'm, I tend to be fiscally conservative, but um, I'm socially uh, moderate because people aren't like numbers. Uh, people you need to be a little bit more fuzzy with, and I understand that. Sure, sure. And, and, and I think, honestly, if you if you polled the unenrolled or independent or whatever you want to call that group that are part of one of the two major parties, I think that's where a lot of them would lie. I think they would lie in that fiscally conservative and, and, and socially moderate lane, you know? Uh, um, so that's, that's a, that's an interesting one to, 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 to self-identify with. Um, this has been a wonderful conversation. It's been, been great to get to meet you. Uh, is there anything I didn't ask you about that, that you, that you want to just talk about? I, I just want to give you the opportunity. And if there isn't, that's fine too. I just, I just want to give you the opportunity in case there's anything else that you wanted to mention. All right, sorry, we had to pause the recording. The internet went out for a second. Let, let me ask you that question again, Vince. Uh, is there anything else that you want to add that you uh, that, that I haven't asked you about yet? Doesn't have to be anything, or if you got something else, uh, I want to give you that opportunity. Absolutely. I think uh, right now our current policy of uh, catch and release for law violators uh, is is not working. Uh, we're not doing an adequate amount of protecting of our citizenship. And also we're not doing the people that are being incarcerated a service. And that seems odd. A lot of people say, well, we're not trying to do them a service. And we kind of are. Uh, if we're not trying to reform people or give them incentive to not break the laws. Uh, then Sorry about that. We had a little uh, internet issue. I'm going to ask you this question again. Is there anything else you want to add? Uh, yes. I think uh, we need a, a, a reform in the way we, look at our judicial and penitentiary system right now. Uh, we're spending a lot of money. Uh, we're incarcerating a lot of our citizenship and we're not really uh, giving people incentive not to break the law. Our, our system right now is leaning more towards the catch and release. And I believe this is due to overcrowding. Uh, and we need to fix that to try to fix the incentive. And I'm gonna keep it short because I don't wanna get cut off by the internet again. Yeah, it's mess with us again. Hey, uh, last question, question five. What's the best way for people to connect with you to find out more about you as a candidate? Uh, Vince Brown for me. That's all one word. Uh, dot U.S. Vince Brown for M.E. And it's, dot, that, yeah. and yeah, it's dot, all written out, all in letters. Uh, that's, the website. That's, my, that's my website. And uh, there, I have an email there. I, I will definitely answer emails if anybody has a question. Um, as a matter of fact, I would love to, I would love to answer emails um, because yeah. that's the best way I can I can talk to you. If I can't talk to you in person, that's that's the best way. I love that. I love that, Vince. Thanks so much. Pleasure, pleasure getting to meet you, and and I hope we talk again real soon. Awesome. Thanks, Corey.